Hello everyone and welcome to the first game we'll be covering from the second day of the Meltweather Champions Chester Finals. It is Arjun Erigaisi versus Magnus Carlsen and this is the third game of their match. Uh, first game ended by Magnus winning. It was a very very hard fought end game. In the end Magnus was able to win and in the second game even though Magnus was winning with the white pieces Arjun was able to, to trick Magnus and uh, even though Magnus had two extra pawns in the end game uh, he could not um, uh, convert uh, in, in, into a full point. So the second game ended in a draw and this is now the third game so Arjun playing incredibly well but not uh, quite there to take a, a full point from Magnus so maybe now in the third game with the white pieces let's see what happens and it is uh, a qu a quite an impressive game uh, so Arjun uh, uh, opens with pawn to d4 we have knight to f6 by Magnus c4 e6 and now knight to f3 not about to test the Magnus's Nimzo Indian defense so knight f3 they're going for the Nimzo uh, the anti Nimzo uh, d5 and now g3 going for the Catalan opening d captures on c4 bishop to g2 and bishop to b4 with check uh, bishop to d2 blocking check and now pawn to a5 just defending the bishop and if uh, white ever captures here, then you play a capture some b4 and you have two very impressive pawns here you have the semi-open a file for your rook uh, black is very happy here so instead a3 asking do you want to go back do you want to capture on d2 magnus captures so we have captures captures with the knight and pawn to b5 now magnus shows that it is possible to defend the c4 pawn but it's very tricky look at the bishop attacking that rook how are you go gonna play this knight to e5 for the moment doesn't really do anything you're just gonna move the rook to a6 so instead b3 this is how you always go after that uh, defended gambited pawn and this is how uh, uh, the, the only good way to do it so b3 c captures some b3 queen captures now again attacking the b5 pawn and magnus just defends it with c6 it looks incredibly ugly uh, but it is how you play this so here arjun castles magnus castles and just rook f to c1 uh, we have bishop to b7 and now queen to b2 now with some ideas of maybe even uh, bringing the knight over to c5 or maybe this knight is coming to c5 maybe knight e1 knight to d3 knight to c5 all depends on how Magnus plays this so knight b to d7 knight to e1 and now pawn to e5 this is a very very uh, tricky move uh, because uh, it gives white a lot of options do you go uh, knight to d3 do you just continue with your plan to control the c5 square do you capture on c6 because now you can uh, it, it's attacked twice and it's not a bad idea for example bishop captures bishop captures rook captures then black plays rook b8 and you've given back the pawn but you have two to one advantage on the queen side you will create a pass pawn at some point and this is what black plays for however here we have d cap on e5 uh, by Arjun and it is now as of move 15 that we have a completely new game uh, Magnus plays knight captures on e5 it is possible because Arjun's knight on d2 will also be undefended so queen captures on e5 queen captures on d2 and now rook to d1 Arjun says thank you for the for the open d file queen to h6 this is the only square for Magnus's queen there are no other squares that you can put the queen to uh, queen to c7 now goes after that bishop and and the rook a to b8 we have knight to d3 again the knight is coming to c5 and queen h5 for the moment magnus stops this we have bishop to f3 harassing the queen queen to f5 and now rook a to c1 gaining control over that c5 square and there's no way to stop the knight from coming to c5 so how does magnus counter this well uh, as you always should uh, he plays pawn to b4 and this is uh it, it's a pawn sacrifice but it's a very very complicated one especially for a rapid game you don't have all the time in the world to, to calculate stuff uh, but i will just show what happens after captures captures and knight captures it seems like uh black just gives up a pawn but after rook f to c8 the position becomes incredibly interesting yes it's equal material uh, but black does have the past c pawn he just put a rook behind it and of course he will uh, try to push let's say queen d6 knight to e4 now you're gonna try to get bishop captures queen captures of course white is not interested in this because if you if you trade the bishop for knight then this bishop becomes a monster once you advance the pawn to c5 so probably queen d7 uh, a, a queen trade let's say captures captures and then after knight f6 attacks the rook rook to d6 now you get this position and uh, 
it's not easy to push the pawn. It's now attacked three times, uh, but the problem is if you ever advance it to c5 prematurely, you can just trade bishop captures, uh, rook captures, and rook captures on c5. You can't capture on, uh, on b4 because the rook is hanging. You can't capture on c5 because mate is hanging on, on d8. So incredibly complicated stuff uh, after this uh, b4 uh, move if uh, Arjun decides to, to go after a captures on b4. But he doesn't. He just stick with, sticks with his plan knight to c5. This is in fact the, the best um, he can do. Uh, bishop to a8 saving the bishop and now queen captures on a5. This is how he goes for it. Uh, but now Magnus misses a very very neat trick. Uh, he plays b captures on a3 rook to b5 is the way to go attacking the queen and the knight here and after the queen a7 move which is the only square to defend the knight now you advance the pawn to b3 and this is how you save your your pass pawn if a4 you just move the rook uh, and the pass pawn uh, remains on the board however after queen captures on a5 b captures on a3 is played queen captures and now h6 and now magnus just traded down into a basically worse position uh, so e4 uh, going after the queen queen to e5 and now knight to d3 attacking the queen queen to e6 and now pawn to e5 attacking the knight on f6 uh, yes uh, like i said arjun traded down into into a better position but now with this advancement of the pawn to e4 and d5 uh, he gives back all the advantage as he was now very very low uh, on time and magnus just plays pawn to c5 now asking uh, do, do you want to trade bishop for knight uh, or do you want to capture on a8? Capturing on a8 is very interesting because after rook captures, queen captures on c5, you will play rook f to c8, attacking the queen, and let's say queen d6, rook captures on c1, rook captures, queen captures on d6, e captures, and rook to d8. Uh, Arjun would be up a pawn, but it would not be a pawn that would... Uh, uh, survive very long so it's basically trading down into a draw so arjun as he is down in the match he tries e captures on f6 now we have bishop captures on f3 f captures on g7 and now rook f to d8 and okay this might be a little bit better and give a bit more chances to arjun to play for the win but this bishop here is just a monster allowing this with little time on the clock uh, is just uh, very very hard to pull off so rook to e1 uh, as the rook was attacked you move the rook with tempo the queen is now attacked queen to b3 magnus says all right let's trade down into an end game queen captures on b3 rook captures on b3 and now you have this position where uh, arjun is for the moment up a pawn and he can grab another pawn on c5 he can just play knight captures on c5 okay this is not really an extra pawn you're going to lose that pawn eventually uh, but knight captures on c5 uh, the move you definitely want to play but uh, arjun doesn't play it he doesn't go for the pawn on c5 he plays knight to f4 and this is very very uh, hard for me to understand uh I, I, I really have no idea why this knight to f4 move was played. Why not capture the passed pawn? And Magnus says, all right, you didn't capture it. He just plays rook to c8, puts the rook behind the passed pawn, and now he wants to start pushing the passed pawn. Arjun plays h3. Magnus continues pushing. Pawn to c4. We have rook to c2 now. And uh, Magnus again continues pushing. Pawn to c3. We have pawn to g4. Okay, now you, you, you created some room for your king so you can get your king into the game. But now rook to b2 by Magnus. And here we have rook to c1. Uh, rook c to c1. If you play rook e to c1 to maybe try and go after this, doesn't really matter. Just captures, captures. King will capture on g7. Later on you can play bishop d1, attack the rook, advance the pawn to c2. And it will be, it will be well, either winning or, or close to winning for black. But here we have rook c to c1. And now Magnus advances the pawn all the way to c2. So even though, even if this was playable, why would you allow this and not capture that pawn on c5 when you had the option? Why allow a pawn to c4? is very very hard to understand here knight to h5 now okay you have the g7 pawn guarded maybe this was the plan all along maybe arjun thought uh that magnus doesn't really have anything here i'm gonna if he allows me to defend my g7 pawn i'm, I'm gonna have some pressure against him as well although it's very hard to see how uh, uh magnus uh, could now play rook to d8 but he goes for rook c to b8 which is also very nice uh and now king to h2 we have rook to b1 and now king to g3 so arjun did everything he got, got the king to g3 the knight on h5 guards the g7 pawn problem is his position is completely lost now so feel free to pause the video and win the game for magnus while i give you a couple of seconds you <laughs> 
So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, spotting this uh, wild idea. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is, of course, Bishop to D1. I already mentioned the move a few lines ago, so probably you remembered it, but just in case. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, of course, we cut off the rooks defending each other. And now there is nothing uh, you, you can do. This rook is about to be captured, so you have to capture either the rook or the bishop or the pawn. Nothing really works if you capture here, just... Uh, queen gets into the game if you capture the bishop uh, same stuff you can either capture or, or even play rook capture on d1 uh, and then bring a queen into the game uh, in the game after bishop to d1 Arjun tried rook capture on c2 he gave up a full rook uh, but this means that uh, he can just resign bishop capture on c2 was played rook to e3 and here okay Arjun tried one more move because it is possible for Magnus to make a mistake and I believe uh, amongst all the players Magnus is the one to make the most mistakes with the mouse he just, uh, you know, uh, misclicks with the mouse and then the weird stuff happens. So it is possible for him to play something like rook to b7 and then just get checkmated like this. But he didn't do that after this rook to e3. Magnus just retreated with the bishop. Bishop to g6 was played. And it was in this position on move 41 that Arjun Ergesi resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. So very nicely played by Magnus, winning game one, winning game three. So basically winning both games with the white pieces. Uh, and Arjun played uh, incredible chess in both game one, game two and game three. It's just that... Uh he, he he spent a bit more time than Magnus, then he got into time trouble, and then Magnus just crushed him in the end game every time, both in game one and game two and game three. In game two, like I said, Arjun survived, uh, but still, uh, if, you, if you put the position to the engine, it, it will give something like plus eight for Magnus uh, in, in several positions. So it was, uh, well... Uh, he fought well, but not not well enough. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game uh, and a little bit of extra info about the match. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. Uh, I I would like to thank Christopher Mo Norris, uh, Mokosoft, Mikel Arboy, Fernando Gibson, and Harry Barton for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of this wonderful event uh, until it finishes. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.